Bada bing, bada boom. The geeks are riled up. We're packed together. We got UFC 274 going down Phoenix, Arizona. Charles Oliveira, Justin Gaethje. We got boys on boys on boys. We got stallions on deck. The line is pumped. We got the card stacked from the bottom to the top. We're going to break it down. Let's get after it. Prelims off rip. Here we go. <laughs> All right, first fight of the night, we got Journey Newson versus Fernie Garcia. This is going to be an interesting matchup. We got a bantamweight scrap. Fernie Garcia is 10 and 1. Journey Newson is 9 and 3. We haven't seen Journey Newson long layoff. Rumors have been talking about certain injuries he's had. Um, hasn't particularly made the biggest splash in the UFC when he made his jump in a little bit ago. Um, some people think of him as like kind of like a letdown. Uh, I don't think of him like that. I think he's still got a little bit of potential. But um, Fernie Garcia, on the other hand, um, this is a talented prospect coming in off the contender series. Um, they say he's a good stand-up guy, uh, wrestling pretty decent. Uh, we're going to find out, man. I don't really like this matchup on the betting side um, because I don't really know what I'm going to see out of Jorney Newsom. So I'm going to sit back and watch the first fight of the night, UFC 274. But uh, if I had to pick, I'd take uh, the more active young Fernie Garcia. So I'm going to pass this off to Goose, and let's get it ripping. Yeah, um, I'm right there with you. I'm going to take him in this one. Uh, Newsom has been out for a while now. He, he is going to look for the takedowns, and he could find success on the ground, but I don't think that he will. Um, I like Fernie Garcia. He's been more active. Uh, I think he's going to have better technique in the stand-up. And if this fight gets stuck there, he's going to have success. So give me Fernie Garcia in this one. Fishman, break it down. Yeah, I'm on the same page as you. Got Journey Newsom, 0 2 and 1. Fernie making his debut from the contender series this past fall. Uh, first round knockout. <clears throat> but Fernie, I mean, I'm going to ride with Fernie on this one due to the fact that uh, he's never been finished. He's got experience on the ground, uh, three subs. He's got to knock out himself and Fortis MMA dude. So he's training with some good dudes over there. So yeah, I'm trusting Fernie on this one. Let's go. We're three and zero on Fernie. Dano, what you got? Uh, Journey Newsome. When he came into the UFC, he had quite a bit of hype around him. But so far, like you said, he's kind of been a letdown. And um, Fernie Garcia coming hot off the Contender Series. I think we got a lot of momentum going. And I want. Um, just people to know that even though Fernie Garcia did have the knockout in the contender series, he's not a knockout guy. That was his first one of his career. Um, a lot of his fights are late rounds and decisions. He's more of a submission guy. So if this fight goes to the ground, you know, I'll be comfortable with it. I don't think Newsom's quite on his level. And then if it goes to the feet, um, Garcia is liable, but I also think Newsom can hold his own on the, on the feet. So, um, with all that being said, I'm just going to ride Fernie and just hope the younger, athletic, cleaner fighter gets it done. Yeah. And we got Shambo making a guest appearance for the first time in a long time. Shambo, what you got in the first fight of the night, 274? I'm going to ride, ride the boat. Going to take Garcia. He's been more <laughs> active. Newsom's scaring me off with that layoff, you know. It's just We're just going to see how he's performing, but I'm going to take Garcia. I think he's going to take the cake. Let's go, baby. Let's go. We're moving into the next uh, fight. We got the ladies popping out, 274 in Phoenix. It's Lupita Godinez, 7-2. and two. They call her Lupi, coming out against Ariana Carnalossi. Uh, she is 14-2 and two herself, Brazilian, strawweight matchup. Um, Lupita, that Mexican fire, she is that girl, man. She set the record. She came back out. She had, like, three fights in no time. She's, like, one – one behind Hamza in the, in the same conversation. So she's a dog to say the least. This girl's got fire. Um, she's seven and two. She had a slight setback. She took an L, but um, you know, this girl comes out to fight. This girl comes out hard. This girl is definitely worth money. You know what I'm saying? I mean, if you're going to bet on girls fights, these are the kind of girls you look for um, girls that won't quit nonstop. Good tank. Um, just a couple of flaws. In this matchup, though, you know, it's going to be tight, man. These girls are going to go back and forth. It's going to be on the ground. It's going to be on the feet. 
I don't really have too much of a of a dialed um, intel on this one per se, but uh, I like Loopy in most of these close line fights just as a distant viewer of these female bouts. So if I had to pick, it would be Loopy, but you're not going to see me having any stakes in this one. Let's go Fishman off rip. I'm going to ride with uh, Ariane on this one. I'm going to take the underdog. I'm going to see what she's got. Let's go. Dano, what you got? Run kick, I love it. I'm sticking with you, and I'm riding the dog with Carnalosi. Um, I think she's, you know, for the women's flyweight division, she is huge. She's got some arms on her, and she uh, shows it where she has nine TKO wins, two sub wins. And then uh, I look at Lupita, Lupi Godinez, and she just doesn't have many finishers. I believe she has one TKO and one sub. So she's not really pushing the pace in these fights, and she's willing to go to the decision. Not that she wants to be on her back foot, but she does end up on her back foot in some of these fights. And, uh, you know, like the aggressiveness really isn't there, whereas Carnalosi is coming out to bang. And I think that um, she's going to be able to overpower Loopy. And I think that some spots um, where this fight will really dictate where it's going, I'm thinking Carnalosi's power and just aggressiveness can uh, take, uh, take over Godina. So I'm Ryan the underdog. Yeah, dude. One thing I do know is Loopy loves her takedowns. So, Goosey, what you got? Yeah, I'm uh, going to pick Loopy, Lupita Godinez in this one. I think uh, she's a better wrestler, better grappler, and I know that she is going to be pushing for takedowns. She knows the type of fighter she is. She's not going to go in there and try and make this a standing battle. Um, I expect her to be pushing the pace, and with Carnalosi's 25% uh, – takedown defense i think that she will find her takedowns and be able to get that top position and grind out these rounds i think uh lupita godinez gets the decision win in this one yeah let's go i mean i hope that size uh disadvantage isn't like the craziest thing because you know a lot of wrestling that's going to take a lot of a lot of um energy per se shamba what do you have for us on this female boot this female boot. I have the underdog. I'm with Dano and Front Kick Fishman. She's massive for the weight class, and I think she's going to get the job done. Let's go. Needless to say, she's a big girl. We're going to the next one. It is a flyweight scrap. Let's go Dano off rip. All right. So, you know, we always talk about contender series fades and, um, coming off the contender series, getting a hype fight and seeing what they do. Well, that's what Vergara is. He came off the contender series, gets thrown up against Odie Osborne and loses unanimous decision. So I feel like, you know, there are levels to this game, but he got thrown into the fire and know he's got to know that he has to work on some stuff. Whereas we got um, Clayton, who has won the contender series, got the contract, I believe, and now is in the UFC. So we're kind of, he's one step behind Vergara. And I think, um, like you said, Vergara is going to be able to um, maybe not out experience, just put out technique and later in the rounds outpace him. Um, I think if this fight ends early, it's going to be with Gladeson Rodriguez. I think he's a stud and uh, quick and explosive, and that's always dangerous. But I'm thinking this fight's going to go long, and I, I'm hoping that Vergara can take advantage as the minutes go on. So I'm going to go with Vergara, too. I think it's a dog pick, too, right? Yeah. Goosey, you go next. Yeah, so um, typically, you know, if I see a minus 200, uh, specifically in that area range, uh, fighter making his debut off the contender series, I do not like to pick that guy. In this one, though, I'm going against that, and I'm going to pick Clayton Rodriguez. Um, to me, he's just a more technical striker. I think he has a higher ceiling. Um He's 26 years old, and he's like a, he's a really good prospect. Uh, on the feet, he's got a really good uh, distance striking game. He's trying to keep guys on the outside, use kicks, uh, straight punches, which does go against the style of Vergara. I think Vergara is going to try and walk forward and get inside throwing hooks. It's going to be tough to do that on Clayton, uh, especially early. And if he is able to mix in some takedowns because he does have uh, decent grappling, I think he'll be able to work, uh, work, what was his name? Um, 
CJ Vergara in this one. And then um, the last thing I want to point out is I was on the fence. And then in his last fight in round three, CJ Vergara ended up going for a takedown on Odie Osborne in a round he was winning and riding that fight out to decision where he lost 29-28. I don't know if the fight IQ is all there, so I'm going to take the uh, younger prospect in this one. Let's go, Fishman. Yeah, so CJ 0-1, I mean, you guys pretty much said everything I'm about to say. Uh, like Dano said, um, both Dana Way Contender Series guys, both from season five. Vergara had his chance to come out, uh, lost to uh, Osborne. And, um, but, um, yeah, I mean, I think the line on this is a little too weird for me to go with Clayton, but um, I think maybe just a little dabble on Vergara. But uh, that's about probably my play on this. Yeah. All right, Shamba, what do you got for this one? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I'm going to go with Rodriguez with this one. He's on a streak. He's very technical. I think he can he can outstrike him and keep him keep distance away from him. He's gonna get the job done. Let's go. Let's go. Keeping that one nice and brief, baby. We're moving into the next boot. It is another lady boot. Tracy Cortez, Mrs. T City, nine and one, coming out against Melissa Gato, eight oh and two. The Brazilian. Um, another close female boot. Didn't do too much on it. I'll take Tracy Cortez because I really want to see her win. Let's go, Goosey. I am fading Tracy Cortez in this one. I just think that her being a decent size favorite in this one is just a product of hype. Um, the footage doesn't really show that. In fact, I would say uh Gato would be the favorite in my opinion I think she's proved more she's went out and been able to manage the wrestling game of Sajara Eubanks so I don't really see Cortez being able to control her uh in that department and then on the feet I like Gato's strikes at range really utilizes the jab the one two um and has some good leg kicks so I think all that is a recipe for success against Cortez I'm going to pick Gato at underdog value. Let's go. I love those underdog value female boot picks. Let's go, Dano. Tracy Cortez. I feel like she is getting a lot of hype from uh, Ortega. And I just feel like, you know, her skills are good and she's more, you know, better on the ground. But I feel like, all her wins, I feel like she's another girl, and I think she is um, has, like, low TKOs, I believe, one, and then maybe one or two subs, where she just is a point fighter. And uh, she has three takedown averages per fight, so she's getting a lot of these points on the ground. And, and uh, Melissa Gatto, I feel like she's at the top of the ranks when it comes to skill in the women's flyweight division, especially on the ground. Whenever you're on the ground with her, um, the fight could be stopped quickly. And I think that if this fight does go to the ground, God is going to get the upper hand. And if it goes to the feet, I feel like, you know, Cortez isn't good enough to where it's like, she has an advantage. I feel like it'll be even on the feet. And, uh, once this goes to the ground, cause I do believe it will, once it does, I feel like God is going to get the upper hand and, uh, I could even see a, a stoppage here. So, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to pick just Gato with the dog. Let's go Fishman. Yeah, so <clears throat> Tracy Cortez, uh, these girls are both on uh, nine win streaks. Tracy fought uh, in the Contender Series, and she's on a streak. But, I mean, like you said, Gato's a threat on the ground, man. I mean, she's got the – she got a few tricks up her sleeve. She's got a Kimura, and she's the underdog. Never took a loss. And bro, I'm, I'm going to ride with the underdog again on this one. Yeah, you know what? Let's do it, man. Underdogs for the girls. Shambo, what do you got? I'm also riding the wave with this one. I'm also taking Gata. Her fights all end in either finishes, fucking submissions, or TKOs. I mean, come on. The other girl went decision seven times out of her eight-fight win streak. So I feel like Gato's just going to beat her fucking ass. 
Yeah, it's the old the old Cejudo game plan versus uh, let me get out there and kick your fucking ass style. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. I can mess with that. You know, Tracy though, I mean, she would just look so good with her hand being raised, wouldn't she? Like she also uh, she also uh, missed weight last time out, and these things don't get easier. These so. are the facts. Mm-hmm. These are the facts. That's why the geeks are on gato. All right, let's move to the next one. We got the old timer, the still good timer, Francisco Trinaldo, 27 and 8, Brazilian, the grip strength of a menace versus Danny Roberts, 18 and 5, the English guy. Okay, so Danny Roberts, this guy's career is kind of weird, man. He, like he gets knocked out and then he comes back and he looks good and then he gets knocked out and then he looks good. It's 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 weird because he is good, man. This guy's striking is good, man. Like his last fight, he looked really good. He's had flashy knockouts that like make you want to step back and be like, okay, this guy's like next level. But here's the thing is Francisco Trinaldo. You know exactly what you're getting with Francisco Trinaldo. This guy comes out in that that same weird, goofy, in and out stance that he does. He's he's still evolving in a way that he can keep up with these newer, um, younger strikers. Uh, he's finding ways to really land these hands, and and he knows where he's at. I love betting these kind of like vetty, vet savvy older dudes when they just know that their careers are just kind of, you know, up for grabs per se. And these younger guys like Danny Roberts, they kind of just run into problems, it feels like, in these fights. And and if he's going to run into problems in fights, Francisco Trinaldo is not, not the guy you want to be standing across from. I think that Danny Roberts is winning a lot of this fight, maybe even the whole fight. But I think Francisco Trinado has got the trick in his bag. I think this guy pulls something out at some point and gets a finish in this fight. I would not be surprised if Trinado gets a sub round two, round three, uh, as Roberts starts to fade. This guy's grip strength, I've heard it from like five different pros. Grip strength, like they haven't felt before. So let me get Trinado to put his hands on Danny Robert. Get this fight to where he wants and get a W in this one. So I'm taking Francisco Trinaldo. I think that's dog price too. Let's go uh, Fishman off rip. So Danny Roberts, he's had 11 bouts in the UFC, 7-4 and four record, and he's on a two-win streak. But like you, like you said, um, but he's got um, – he lost to Michelle Pereira by knockout, Claudio Silva by sub. He's a Sanford dude, but – um. On the other hand, I, I just don't think it's a good matchup for him. Trinaldo in his last five, he's four and one. He only lost to Muslim Salikov in these five fights. He uh, knocked out Jai Herbert, who just got knocked out by uh, Ilya Topuria. And um, Bobby Green, Dwight Grant. I mean, so he's, he's just, he's a vet. He's been around 17 and seven in the UFC, never been knocked out. And I don't think um, Roberts is a threat on the ground. I don't think I don't think this is going to take place on the ground. If it takes and when it does take place on the feet, Trinado is going to win, baby. I think mean, nine and zero with the knockout, and I think Roberts' chin has been uh, softened up a little bit. Let's go, opening that can of worms, Goosey. What you got? I got Danny Roberts in this one. Um, looking at it. I mean, I like the size difference. You know, you got you got um, Francisco Trinaldo coming up from lightweight. Danny Roberts already a big welterweight as it is. He's six foot one. Trinaldo's five eight. Um, the power for Tr- Tr- Trinaldo has not transferred to welterweight. He hasn't had a finish um, in two fights there. And that Dwight Grant split decision win is not aging um that well in my opinion especially his last time out um he did get knocked out so what does that say about Trinaldo's power that he couldn't knock him out um so I like Danny Roberts to uh have the power advantage I'd like him to be able to sit on the outside and really pick his shots in this one and I think um you know size does matter as they say, and it will show itself in this. I'm going to pick Danny Roberts. All right, Dano. I'm going to go with the experience. We just had a pick like this last week with Arlovsky and Collier, where these just older guys who have been around the game for a long time just um, know how to win fights, even when they might not have won the fight. 
right? So Chernaldo's got a lot of experience. He's seen everything and he's hella durable, right? Danny Roberts, he's got a lot of red flags. He steps um, left when he should have stepped right. And um, I just feel like if you look at Chernaldo's last fights, they're all decisions. So he's durable as hell. He's gonna, gonna go later in the fights. And, you know, when I was thinking of this fight, I was thinking you give Danny Roberts 15 minutes in there with a vet, is he gonna mess up? enough to where the vet can take over, right? So I think Trinaldo is going to be able to take advantage of those mistakes. And I do think mistakes are going to come from Danny Roberts. So I'm going to bet on uh, Trinaldo capitalizing. And I don't know about putting away, but um, um, definitely capitalizing. So I'm riding with the pick Even though there's no dog or anything, I feel like Trinaldo's got it. All right, let's go. All right, Shambo, what do you have for us? I'm picking the tank Trinaldo. That boy is durable. He's goofy. And I feel like with this experience, he's going to get it on in the later rounds. Let's go. Those are the early prelims. We just broke them down. Tune back in for the next video. We got the prelims in the main card.